So it's called Chromatrocasi, the Pantone of Mexican Social Mobility. Uh, a few words of me, I do work in the world of technology, but all the speech about figure out how to simply monetize uh, projects with AI or data science absolutely bores me to tears. Uh, you know, I'm reading a really cool article on Wired Magazine about a new washing machine that predicts with AI when the subcontainer is going to be empty. It's like watching paint dry for me. No? What I do care about, however, is how to translate and use uh, this technology with AI or data science to improve the knowledge of our society. No? So uh, another thing, I'm, I'm just learned in, start learning English five months ago. So uh, the, maybe something, uh, my English, uh, I'm going to do my best, okay? Uh, so uh, the question that I want to answer is, is there a mathematical formula for succeed in Mexican social mobility? Is there a model or a formula? You know? And uh, the first part is since before it became an independent nation state in 1821 in Mexico, Mexico's population has been troubled by issues of race and class. Uh, anything from Spain here? No? Okay, uh, because when Europeans arrived to colonize the Americans more than 500 years ago, they introduced a hierarchy based on skin, color, and race that persists to this today. No? Um, this is called uh, uh, casta pintura, uh, casta painting that represents uh, all the all the hierarchy is based on the skin tone and race in Mexico. No one, if you are an Spanish and a Criollo, you have less uh, social mobility on the ancient uh, Mexico. And also, in contemporary Mexican advertising and films, lower classes people are almost always shown with darker skin. No? And richer and uh, richer class people are shown with white skin. Uh, the lead character in the Oscar-winning film Roma, for example, is a darker and skinned male, uh, representing some somebody considered poor in Mexico. Uh, her boss, uh, in other hand, is rich and white. Uh, some Mexican companies choose to feature white skin models to represent their Mexican brands. This, this so-called aspirational advertising has become common practice for most advertising companies in Mexico. Uh, this is, we are going to see a little video about... Uh, ah, it's, This is a recent campaign uh, created the last year, 2018, for the luxury department store uh, chain called Palacio de Hierro. Uh, they try to make the brand appear diverse by feature an androgynous model, a frickal model, and disabled person. Maybe this sounds great. Except they are well, all still uh, like skin people. So if you want, this is a commercial branded from Mexico, but you don't recognize Mexican people in the advertising. It's maybe a U.S. people. No, this is no. This is this is Mexico, but the people, it's not Mexican. Soy totalmente palacio. So, uh, let me stop that. Ah, I lost my, ah, here. So, well, uh, the perception within the Mexican advertising industry 
is that if a white person uses a specific brand, the product is considered to be desirable. Uh, Mexican mar marketers believe that if a consumer buys an aspirational product uh, that is used by a, skin, a lighter skin person, the consumer thinks they are participating in a desirable white lifestyle. So what happened next? Uh, the National Institute of Statistics and Geography in Mexico each by year produce a study about social mobility in Mexico. No, it's what happened if I live better than my parents, or if my parents' life, the style life is better than my grandparents, no? But since the last year, they include another feature, uh, a, new, uh, a new feature in the study, that was the skin tone. They found that whiter people uh, have a better social mobility than darker people, uh, than darker skin people. No, this is this is was really strange in Mexico because for our culture, it's uh, we don't uh, we think that we don't have we don't have. Uh, Racism or or or, or uh, yes, racism in in our culture. We we think ah, this is uh, this is for other countries, not happens in Mexico. But when the the, the institute published their work, all the journalists start to screaming. It's mostly because they don't have uh, they don't know statistics. But the others think uh, the, the other journalists is uh, uh, start thinking that ah this is not happen uh, the racism based based on color skin in Mexico doesn't exist so to prove that I made an algorithm uh, first I made a web scrapping of the Congress website in Mexico. Uh, I allow to have the photo of the Congress people, the name, and the political party. Okay. Then I have all the data of the Congress, uh, Congress women, women, and Congressmen on Mexico. And then with with the photo, I train a model uh, for the automatic Google image search. So I found, I know, ah, this is the Congresswoman Yahel Abdallah Carmona. I know one photo. I'm searching in the Google image database. Uh, Google tell me, ah, the, all these pictures are for the, for the cos Congresswoman, and I'm trained the model to recognize uh, her on, the, uh, on, the, on all images. You know? The next step was a face recognition algorithm to uh, to tell the model, ah, this is the this is the person that you are looking for. No, so that was in this step was a funny thing for me because um, I'm from science, but also I'm from the art. I am an artist and a scientist, and I collaborate for the face recognition algorithm. I'm reuse another algorithm that that I use for an art project. Uh, let me play the video. Uh, uh, this piece I made it with uh, uh, with a Mexican artist called uh, Rafael Lozano Hemer. is the most famous electronic artist in Mexico. I made the algorithm to this uh, piece. Uh, the piece is called Level of Confidence. Uh, it's an art project to commemorate the mass kidnapping of 43 students from Ayotzinapa Normalist School in Iguala. Uh, the project consists of a face recognition camera that has been trained to tirelessly look for the faces of the disappeared students. Uh, as you stand front uh, of the camera, the system used an, an algorithm to find which student facial feature looks most like yours 
and gives a level of confidence of how accurate the match is in a percent. Uh, the biometric surveillance algorithm used uh, are typically used by military and police forces to look for suspicious individuals, uh, whereas in this project, they are used to search for big victim instead. So you can, this is open source project for face recognition. You can download it in, uh, on GitHub. Uh, it's a little, uh, you can, uh, I'm going to share the video also. But when I um, use this algorithm that I developed uh, with Rafael Lozano for this project for face recognition, so in the first step, I have uh, all the photos and the data of the Congress uh, people. No, I'm automatic, uh, I use an automatic Google search image. Then from the image, I use this algorithm that I take for the RPs that I collaborate with Lozano Hammer to identify uh, the face of, of each person and then and make a skin tone subtraction and calculation. No? I, I, I made another model to recognize the skin and I calculate a really, really accurate tone scale based on the, uh, of the average of all the photographs. No? With that, we realized something really, really strange in Mexico. The right-wing political parties in Mexico are, are whiter than the left-wing parties. No, the left wing par the left wing parties are darker than the right wing. No, that for Mexico this uh, uh, maybe we think that, but based on data confirmed that this is happening in Mexico, this was a shock uh, uh, discover. So then, I have this. I have. Uh, I have the, uh, the results of INEGI, the National Institute of Statistics. I have this result by set of our Congress. The next step is, uh, is to define who is more successful in Mexico. No? For that, I made a web, a web scrapping on, of LinkedIn, searching all the people that presume uh, to be CEOs in Mexico. So that uh, that happened. I, uh, I found uh, below you can find uh, the six first uh, skin tones based on the Perla skin color palette, and you can find the, tr the three first of them. Uh, Forty-five plus thirty-five plus nine is eighty something. No. Uh, 80 something percent of all the CEOs in Mexico have white skin tone. No? And only less than 10% of the CEOs in Mexico have a brown, uh, have darker skin. The, ne the next is only for geographics. Uh, this is where the CEOs are located in Mexico, in the main cities, no? principally in Mexico City, on the state of Mex on Mexico, uh, Monterrey and Guadalajara have, that are currently are the most important cities on Mexico. They are located the CEOs. The next one is where the CEOs study. You can see this. This is the 14%. It's the National Autonomous uh, uh, University of Mexico, but is the only uh, is is the only one that uh, that is free to enter. The other the other universities are private universities. Not the first one. ITES, UIA are both private. UNAM is the only one that have that is the free. Itam, Anahuat, and the Udla, the last one, there are, uh, there are all private schools. No? So the 80, 85% of all the CEOs came from private schools, universities in Mexico. 
But there is, there is a difference. This is, for example, where the, where the students of CEO, uh, where the CEOs came from ITEMS, one of the private schools. This is how it's separated by area of study. The area one is the engineering and science. The two area is chemical and biological. The three is all the stuff about, uh, uh, how do you say, uh, management and all this stuff. And the fourth area is humanities. You can see the, the CEOs that came from uh, private schools have a training in area three. You know, it's uh, management, uh, all this stuff of the area three. You know. But the CEOs that came from the national university, they, they, they study something related to engineering or science. And this is really strange because the, the way that the private universities and the national universities form their students, they have maybe a bias, no? uh, and, 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 and that was funny. No? The other thing, the gender, obviously 93% are, are, are men and only the 7% in Mexico are CEOs. And this is the model from the mathematical formula for succeed in Mexican social mobility. No, if you, uh, it's a statistics, it's not a law, no, but if you are, if you are white and you come from private university, the probability to, in Mexico to become a CEO, it's higher than the others, uh, than the other options. No? Yeah, we present this study and became really famous, a little famous in Mexico and in the TV. And this, the Revista Chilango is one of the most famous uh, rev uh, reviews, newspapers. Ah, I don't know how to say Revista. Well, a, a publication, uh, it's a really famous publication in Mexico City, it's called Chilango. They dedicate the number of uh, their February issue to ask uh, for my study. They dedicated all the number for, for thinking about the racism based on skin tone in Mexico. Uh, thank you. We, when, 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 the, when the editor came for me to, to write a, 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 a review or something like that, I told you, I don't know how, how to write because I'm a scientist. I, I know how to write, but not like, like for a journalist level. So, but I make stuff with, program, with, with computers, with, program, uh, with programming. So we decide to make this interactive cabin. It's like a photo boot uh, cabin. You can stay. You no, know, the same algorithm recognize you, uh, take your skin tone, and accurate the skin tone uh, with TensorFlow uh, with TensorFlow uh, technology. And you can uh, the algorithm measure all you. Uh, antes de que se vaya. The, the algorithm, the algorithm and the photo boot. Uh, uh, give the people this. The, this thing is a photograph of her uh, a skin tone uh, and a. Uh, um, Data related with your skin tone, your uh, your degree, where you from, something like uh, I don't know the the two percent with your same skin tone and your uh, and your level of study in Mexico have um, I don't know uh, something access to water or no I don't know statistics is only for uh, it's a project to uh, take a look about the skin tone discrimination in Mexico. So for this project, we won the National uh, Human Rights Prize from Media, and we are really, uh, really excited about it. 
So for me, code and data is a creative tool, not only uh, primarily for unravel the hidden dynamics on Mexico, and for, for me, this works very, very, very well. So you can download all the code, it's on GitHub, you can, you can use the face tracking, the skin color tracking for whatever you want. So thank you for being with me. <laughs>